long-awaited Wooting 2 HE update. I have not updated yet until last April. I've been itching to make this update, but I've been really scratching and looking for the time to make this update. So in the end, I received a DVT sample and I thought, you know what, let's just make a video update out of this because then I can just get straight into it and get to the core points, which is when are you going to receive your keyboard? Take a look at the DVT sample we have here, how you're going to receive your keyboard in general, keycaps, keyboard, um, and some options you can still add before we're going to ship out the keyboard to you. So let's get straight into it. As you know, we've divided the Wooting 2 HE into two batches. We have a batch one and we have a batch two. Batch one and batch two have different production times, unfortunately. We were originally planning to just sync the batch one and batch two production at the same time since batch one got delayed. The reason we have two batches in general is because there's different delivery times for all the materials. Batch one materials we already prepared far in advance. Batch two materials we prepared at a later stage. However, it would seem that we are still having a supply issue when it comes to some of the materials for batch two. I'm going to focus on batch one first here. So batch one, we can we have all the materials and we can go into a mass production after I've approved the DVT samples and after we've passed all the licenses and, and tests. And that's the phase we're in right now. Uh, the 15th of June is the final date, the deadline for this DVT phase, which means that by that time I will have approved the DVT sample, an ISO and ANSI version, I will have approved the keycaps, uh, the environmental and job tests will have finished. Uh, if I'm right, we'll be granted our FCC CE license. We don't see a problem there. And then we can get into the material preparing phase for batch one. Now the materials are already prepared for, let's say 90%, just a few parts that are produced in-house uh, will be prepared at that time. And we can go into mass production for batch one on the 6th of July, which is really great. Finally, we have a date, uh, and this is a date that we've convened with the manufacturer so we're confident about the production date if there is a little delay in the delivery of some supplies or something else the delays will be very minor speaking of few days or a week it will not be a month or a little bit unknown anymore so that that's really great for batch two however we ran into an issue the Components we're still missing for batch two are whole effect sensors. We already have the whole effect sensors for batch one since the beginning of this year, but for batch two, we were expecting to receive them by end of May, but they did not come in because by the time they finished, um, beginning of May-ish, by the end of April, beginning of May, the manufacturer contacted us and shared with us that the sensors are not completely according to specifications. The part that is not according to specification is the sensitivity of the sensor. Now, to elaborate a little bit about what the whole effect sensor is, it's basically the sensor that's underneath each switch, which detects the magnet field from the switch itself, and how, and it's entirely how we decide what the position or what the proximity is of the switch stem towards the sensor. And it's a vital part of the keyboard. It's how we get analog input and do all these nice things. So if the sensitivity is too low, which is not the case, uh, that would mean that we cannot sense the start of the press anymore at 0.1 millimeter. So for as a reference, our specification says we need the sensitivity of 4.0. The manufacturer uh, made a mistake and the sensitivity is at 3.7. Now initially they tried to push through this 3.7 sensitivity but it's unacceptable for us. We don't want to deviate from our requirements which is when the switch is not pressed we, re or we already want to detect, detect the magnet that it's in a resting position so that we can activate the key at 0.1 millimeter so like the first movement that you make of the key. Manufacturer told us we have to wait until October because that's when they can finish a new batch. 
but we've pushed and told them they really need to look at a different way because we can't wait this long for a batch two production. So after a hard review, conclusion was, okay, they're going to rework the sensors and increase the sensitivity from 3.7 to 4.0. The thing is that the thing and the reason why this is not the first thing they'll, they would do is usually when you rework these kind of sensors, there's a defect rate involved. And these defect rates are usually very high. So they took one wafer, which is basically a big silicon circle with all the circuits inside that make up the sensors and they put it back into its manufacturing process and one of its manufacturing processes is that a coil is uh, let's say i'm oversimplifying this but a magnetic coil is put in proximity of the sensors and depending on the distance of that coil it will tune or calibrate the sensitivity of these sensors now they will redo that process and recalibrate the sensors to 4.0 and it will be a defect rate of about 10 to 15% per wafer, which is very low considering the process. But they're also not allowed to make any mistakes in this rework process, because if they have to rework it again, the defect rate will probably be much higher. So the rework process, unfortunately, is not done within a couple days, weeks, or month. It needs more time. They're going through it carefully and making sure that they don't make any mistakes. And they've been doing, uh, going through this process since the beginning of May. Uh, every week we have contact with the manufacturer to get a status update if there's any deviation from the plan. And until so far, for this last, what is it now, almost month and a half, it's all still going according to plan, which is good. And we expect them to finish the entire rework process by the beginning of August. That's when we, sp we expect them to finish and deliver the sensors at our factory. So from an optimistic viewpoint, we will be able to do mass production in August. But looking at how you know, logistics work and how we always anticipate some type of delay, it would be safer to assume that a production happens in September. And uh, after production in September for batch two, we get into the, the logistics part. So taking a step back now to batch one people. <laughs> For batch one, uh, after we finish the production in July, uh, beginning of July, 6th of July, and then it takes a couple of days to do production, we will go into the transit from factory to our warehouse. Now there's two ways we can transit or make this transport. Um, one way is by air freight, another way is by sea freight. If you go by air freight, it only takes about, let's say two weeks, either to our US warehouse or to our European warehouse. But if you take sea freight, it will at least take, you can say 40 days. And now with the congestion happening in, in, in sea freight and not knowing exactly what can happen, who knows, just with the lecker editions, we'll get something similar as the Panama, Can Panama Canal uh, blockage, which would be terrible. It can easily take 60 days or a little bit longer. That's uh, not very ideal. So we have to kind of assume right now, worst case scenario, sea freight can take 60 days and then we'll be in our warehouse. And at our warehouse, we can do the last mile shipment. And last mile shipment really depends on, in the US, it depends on which state you are, can take up to a week if it's a state far away from Las Vegas or Philadelphia, depending on where the, uh, which one we'll use. Then in Europe, usually within the, within the European Union, it takes only like at most three business days. Outside the European Union, shipping from the Netherlands, it can take anywhere from uh, a week to four weeks, depending on which country and which service we use. Now, the thing we want to do, and we will email you about, is an express route, meaning that the fastest way uh, we can find for an affordable rate to ship the keyboard much earlier. What that will entail is that the transfer from factory to warehouse will use air freight, but the air freight that will sh uh, ship out will be limited. It will not be the entire batch by air freight. It will be a limited amount that will go by air freight, and we're going to call this the express route for right now. Uh, 
And what we ship by air freight will just take two weeks to arrive in the warehouse. And then from the warehouse, we'll do the last mile shipment as usual. And depending on if, uh, if you're, if you have an international order, so or within, or you're, you're have you have an order within the European Union, we'll offer some additional shipping options, uh, such as DHL Express. But when you receive the email, you will find out which options are available to you, and that can significantly shorten also the last mile shipment from warehouse to your house. And we'll, but we will not offer this option necessarily if the transit is at most a week. If it's longer than a week, we will also offer an option to upgrade for last mile shipment. Focusing on the shipment, air freight shipment from factory to warehouse, we will ask probably $10 or 10 euros extra a shipping fee if you want to take this route. Uh, and then we will make your order part of the air freight batch. You will receive an email from us how to enter this batch. Uh, if the majority of the people are jumping in and wanting to do the air freight route, we will increase the quantity that will ship over air freight. And if it's such, such an overwhelming amount of people, we will just air freight everything. And we'll, you know, if, if there's a majority that paid and a minority that didn't pay, we'll find a way to balance out an average or a discount to, to people to give a return on the overpay that we've received. Uh, we'll figure that out. We will do the same thing but for batch two. We'll do it a little bit further in advance for batch two. Uh, and then you can also go for an express route. So you'll receive an email about this. Keep an eye open. We'll also post about it. Uh, and then you can easily upgrade. All right, that was lots of talk <laughs> about the production and batches. I didn't even touch on like any struggles that we've had over the last month to get to this final phase. So I'll cover some of it while I'm going to show you the DVT sample and how you're going to receive your keyboard and what the steps are you need to take when you receive your keyboard. So let's get into this. Starting off with the blister. This is the blister with ABS keycaps inside. The ABS keycaps are separated from the keyboard. The keyboard itself has no keycaps installed. We will send you the uh, keyboard without keycaps and then in addition the blister with the ABS keycaps. Unless you order the keyboard without keycaps, like a blank keyboard, then you just get the keyboard and no keycaps. The reason why we did this is specifically for Europe. Just to do it this way. In Europe, there's a lot of different languages. It's easier to deal with languages when we can separate the variable of the languages. At the same time, it helps us offer you an option to buy it without keycaps if you already have a great keycap set, or to allow you to upgrade to a different keycap set that we might have available, which you would prefer over an ABS set. We have that kind of keycap set, a PPT keycap set, which I will show you in a little bit later. It's a double shot PPT keycap set, which you can upgrade to. I'll get into a bit later. All right. This a bit here. Okay, so let's open this box, the keyboard. I hope you guys like the packaging. With the Lecker edition, we didn't show the packaging at all. Wooting 2 HD a little bit different because it's similar to our Wooting 2 packaging and we don't mind to show this in advance. It's not a special edition, but it is definitely special for you. Um, so here we have the keyboard without any keycaps installed. Uh, there is a plastic blister over the keyboard. This is to protect the keyboard inside the box, but it's also a dust cover. So don't throw this away. It has three holes on the back, which is for the cable routing. So you can just put it over your keyboard with keycaps as a dust cover. So it's really great to keep this. Don't throw it away. <laughs> I'll just put it away here, there, over there right now though. Then there is the accessory pack. It's a very simple box. Uh, we didn't want to add too much plastics and uh, other stuff inside the box to minimize as much as possible. Inside this accessory box are four switches, the cable, and a wire puller for the keycaps. We won't be needing this one right now. Then here we have the keyboard. 
And then there's still something inside the box that is for you to find out. Let's put the box away. So here we have the keyboard. No keycaps installed. Uh, you can see that the stabilizers are blue at this moment. This will change to black. If you like the blue color, please let us know in the, in the comments or in, uh, on the blog or on this video. Okay, uh, all the switches are already pre-looped. So you can definitely in this phase decide to grab a switch puller, pluck out the switches and do a mod. I do recommend that if you plan to do, uh, <clears throat> if you plan to loop all the switches or mod all the switches, screw out the top plate. You can find all the screws here on the top plate. You can just screw it out. You can take out the top plate or you can leave the top plate in here, but definitely take out the screws. It makes it much easier to pop out the switches because every switch that is close to a screwing point is a little bit more tight because of how it's tightened in that area. All right, out of the, but out of the box, the switch is already pre-lubed. Uh, you'll hear it later. It's already very nice. The stabilizer is also pre-lubed with a grease. It's also very nice. Don't need to worry about it. Only if you really want to improve the acoustics, you can do it if you want. The ABS keycaps here, we made a special blister for this. You un can unclick these clips here. You can open the whole box and the keycaps will not jump out. Now I've already put this in and out a couple of times, but we made sure that all the keycaps are tight into the blister so nothing pops out when you shake it. Keep the blister, don't throw it away. It's a great way to, con uh, to storage your keycap set. So definitely keep the blister as a storage unit as well. It's, it works really great. It can do different sizes of keycaps. It, it clamps the stem and it clamps around the keycap shell. So keycaps are in there really tight. It's a really great thing to use. Don't throw it away. Don't waste the plastic. <laughs> All right. So the idea is that you open the set. You can put the keyboard here. It's not a perfect fit. We didn't make it to put the keyboard here, but you can put the keyboard here. It's not an issue. And then you just start installing the, key, uh, the keycaps in this manner. If you bought the other keycap set that we offer or you have your own keycap set, you can also start installing the keycaps in this way. It's a very easy process. You just have to transfer. We already have the whole layout right in front of you. Uh, it's very clear what is what. The keycaps are very easy to get out. Also, there's no struggle. You don't need a keycap puller to, key, to grab out the keycaps. It's a very easy and nice process. And I hope you get a little bit more intimate with your keyboard and you understand that there's a difference between a keycap and a switch. Yes, sometimes we do that, get that question or a misunderstanding. This is a UK ISO layout. I will show you the US ANSI layout with the PVT keycaps in a minute, which will be an option as well. So the main thing that's been keeping us really, really busy uh, over this uh, last month and we, what has delayed batch one for most part. First of all, was the PCBA, which I covered in the previous blog uh, or previous update, but that all finalized and there is still some double checking I need to do with this DVT sample for the PCBA, but with the EVT sample, so that was the phase before this, we basically verified the PCBA and everything is just fine. So I'm not expecting any issues with this DVT sample. Mechanically, everything is sound. So happy with that. And one of the biggest things that was fixed, which I was really worried about, is the top plate with bottom case fit. This was the one thing that I wasn't sure if we were able to fix this or if we were able to get it much better. But with the last adjustment that was made, it's such a great fit. It we really, uh, this is the best it's ever been, even for Wooting 2. It's better than what we had on the original Wooting 2. I don't see how we could have done this better. Uh, the, flip, the, the fit is super, it's really flush. It's great. So the, this, the, the, the fit means the top plate into the bottom case. It's like completely one line with the bottom case. Uh, there's no separation of the logo or between the bottom case edge and the top plate. It's, it's really good. So I'm really happy we took the time and spent the money 
that was required to tackle this issue. So that caused also a delay in the whole process, but it's, uh, you know, don't want to skimp on this kind of stuff. So happy we did that. Other than that, uh, most of it was uh, buying last IC components, waiting for the DVT process to get started. Uh, the EVT process was also a little bit slow with the PCBA finishing up, but now we're finally in this phase. This oh, final, final phase approving this DVT sample, which is really great. So can't wait to get into mass production and get these keyboards out as well. We have a lot of happy Wooting 2 Lecker Edition people uh, that are really enjoying their keyboard. Very happy about that. The pos there was a very positive response uh, on the Wooting 2 Lecker Edition. There are people already in the Discord channel. For, you can jump into the Disco our Discord, go to the Lecker Edition channel or Lecker Hype channel and you can find the feedback from people, but also a lot of people that already started modding the switches and lubing the switches, and they will have great tips for you how you can improve the acoustics further on this keyboard and generally make a better keyboard out of it. Highly recommend that. All right, we're almost finished assembling all these ABS keycaps. I don't know how long this took, but I, um, I guess you can do this less than 10 minutes. You can do it in less than five minutes if you focus on it. Let me do a small typing test for you. It's not, will not be the most ideal test, but then you get a good impression of what, of what it sounds like. For this typing test, I will use a wrist rest. This is our silicone wrist rest, black color. It's made of 100% silicone. It's flexible as silicone, it, but it has a firm surface, but it's still soft while using it. So it's, it's a really great wrist rest. Check out the reviews on the store page. There's a lot of positive feedback on there, which gives you a better impression about what the wrist rest is. This thing is not gonna break. It's gonna stay with you for a long time. It has a good fit with the keyboard as well but it's not exclusively for Wooting 2 keyboards or Wooting keyboards in general. All right, so the wrist rest is here. If you will, oh, so right, if you want to add the wrist rest to your order, you can just send an email to social at wooting.io. We will eventually give an opportunity for everybody to add it to their order by filling in a form. You'll receive an email about it. Highly recommend the wrist rest. All right, so let's get some typing going. I hope you can um, recognize that this is a really great sound signature and I have, you know, I'm the one typing here, but the typing experience is also really great for a stock keyboard. Uh, I'm very happy with the result. It can always be better, but for what we could have expected, uh, this is great. Keycaps make a difference. That's why uh, first, I'm going to show you the RGB, and I'll then sh show you the PBT keycaps, which you can also change your order to. Cable. All right, cable, cable. Let's turn on some RGB here. It's gonna be really cool when you guys receive this keyboard. There's been no reviews out yet, even for the Wooting 2 Lecker Edition. We're working on it, like 
we haven't sent out the review keyboards yet. We don't want to rush it. We want to make sure that when we get reviews on this, um, that we have everything ready. Just really excited to also deliver this keyboard because uh, I really think it's the best work we've done until so far. And it just feels really great. Okay, okay. RGB. So um, I hope you can see all the RGB here. Oh, I'll turn on our special effect here. So this is with our standard ABS keycaps. Uh, let me turn on a analog RGB effect here. Do -do. Some jelly. There we go. Uh, so here we can see the, the sensitivity. Here I'm at the edge of the button. And as I press it further, it spreads out the jelly effect. You can see that we could even make the jelly effect a bit more granular than what it is right now by adding the brightness. I don't think it has the brightness right now. It just turns on the next row of LEDs at a certain point. You can do multiple keys, of course. Or we can do some color mixing. Let's see if it still works. All right. So now I'm mixing RGB colors, depending on how far down I'm pressing the individual free arrow keys here. So I have red all the way down, and then I add, what is it, blue, red, blue, it's purple, and then add green, and it's white. And I release the green slowly, and it'll, you can see it will change its grades of purple until, oh, sorry, until it's completely purple. Okay, so in other words, fun stuff with analog stuff, with analog, let's get into the PPT keycaps. this side of the cable. So I have an anti set here. I'm gonna put this keyboard over here. So the PBT keycaps, double shot PBT keycaps with shine through legends or backlight and seamless characters. It's a mouthful, a lot to explain there. But these keycaps are not Wooting branded keycaps. Instead, they are blank branded keycaps. Uh, literally, the brand blank, not blank keycaps in itself. Put this stuff away. All right. Um, right, so. The double shot PPT keycaps is part of our what we call our B brand blank. This here. This is basically we go look for off the shelf type of keycaps that we think are good or off the shelf products. In this case, keycaps, it will mostly be keycaps for blank that we feel are good, but we could not offer you with the Wooting brand. And the reason why we can't offer it to you with the Wooting brand is because it doesn't have some specific Wooting design elements to the keycaps and we would not want to install these kind of keycaps on our stock keyboards uh, and we don't and we want to avoid the confusion between what you can expect when you buy Wooting keycaps so a really simple example is that if you would buy Wooting PBT keycaps you would expect this Windows logo to be the Wooting logo which we cannot do because the molding cost for double shot PPT keycaps, which is a long story, it, but it's just insanely expensive and almost you cannot easily afford something like this. Even for just a few keys, uh, you need to open an entire new and can be smaller mold, but also cost money. Uh, but we would not just want to open it for one key, we would open it for these keys all here and here and it's just not worth it right now but we are working on something in the background related to this. Anyway, so this is why we made the blank brand. So it allows us to offer you other keycap options that do not necessarily have the booting design, but we feel that this is great bang for buck 
double shot PPT keycaps. It's the best design we are able to find for this budget range. Um, and that's why we're offering them also. Let's see. So they're double shot PPT and they're shine through. Let me show you the RGB here. Uh, let's turn on the wavy colors. There we go. Okay, these PPT keycaps, key they're kind of a carbon black. They're seamless, they're double shot PPT. Double shot PPT has different sound signature, lasts longer, legends don't fade away. And well, I don't think I need to explain much more about PPT generally just being a better material than ABS when it comes to durability. Uh, the fact that they're double shot also means legends will never fade away. I recommend you to read in a little bit more about what that means. You can see here the double shot effect. You can see the shell here is uh, PPT and then the inside here is the, the second shot, which is in this case made of an ABS. Double shot PPT keycaps, the legend is never made of PPT. That's not possible. All right, so why we feel this set is really great is because of a few reasons. First of all, the font choice is good. It's not gamery, it's not lame, it's just good. It's not perfect, then it would be rooting, but it's really good. <laughs> uh, then the second part is that it's seamless, meaning that you can see the O key, the B key, the D key, they're closed. There's no like opening somewhere. It's a seamless, character and there's no opening in these keys which just adds to a better design there is full transparency are slightly darker spots on those particular keys because plastic still needs to flow inside a circle it's really hard to avoid that it's a technical thing that you cannot just uh, circum uh, easily of, um, solve but it's not that obvious other than that, what is very important to me is the sizing of all the characters and the fonts are in balance. Could have been a tiny bit better, but in general, and especially compared to other keycap sets out there, I cannot emphasize this enough, especially compared to other keycap sets out there. The balance here is really great. The F keys are nice and small. The alpha keys are nice and big. The number row is in balance with the alpha keys. The modifier keys here are are smaller and they're all the same size, specifically tab, caps lock, shift, control, alt, and the whole row there, makes a good set. Then when we look at the tab, caps lock, shift, enter, sh and uh, home, page up, etc., the lines of the characters are also fairly consistent. So there's no like thin and thick line everywhere. It is not perfect. I'll admit it, it's not perfect. It's very difficult to get this perfect with PPT, but it's the best I've seen out there until so far when it comes to shine through keycaps. Now there are admittedly, uh, you can maybe find good double shot PPT keycaps without shine through, which is an easier process than this. But with shine through, this is definitely the best you can find. All right, let me show a little bit of a typing uh, demo here. Then I'll get into how you can get these keycaps with your keyboard. Let's put this one over here again. I didn't screw anything up on my laptop there because it's activated. <laughs> but that was the typing test. 
there is definitely a difference between typing with PPT keycaps versus the ABS keycaps. In general, it lowers down the high pitch and uh, highlights a bit more of the low bass. It's a slight difference, but it's definitely there. A lot of the noise usually comes from the keycaps slamming against the switch housing. That's why keycaps also have a pretty big impact on the acoustics of the keyboard. All right, so these double shot PPT keycaps, if you want to add them to your order or you want to change your ABS keycaps to the PBT keycaps, that's possible. Uh, you can contact us on social at wooting.io and we can make the change for you. But we will send out an email also with a form which gives you the opportunity to make the change. The PBT keycaps will only be $10 or 10 euros extra. So that means that if you place an order for $180, for example, or euros, or you place an order for 185 euros or dollars, depending on before or after the price change, then you're gonna pay 10 additional dollars or euros on top of that. So that would be 195 in total in dollars or euros. Um, if you don't go for the no keycap option, it's $175 or euros at this moment. Uh, if you've had it before, it was 170, but looking at the price, what it is right now, it would be 175 euros or dollars, no keycaps. So that means that the PBT keycaps comes with an extra $20 or euros, which makes it $195 uh, or euros. I just changed the profile there. So it's only 10 bucks extra. If you buy the keycap set separate from the keyboard, it is $30. Our MSRP for the keycaps is $35, but we're just gonna sell it for $30 when we just launch it. That's a free zero, 30. Cool. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you have any questions or you want to know more about the wrist vest, the keycaps, or this DVT sample, please let me know. I would be very happy to answer your questions. I'm very happy to show you anything about the keyboard. And otherwise, I will see you in one of the live streams or I hope you'll read the next update when we get more close to the actual delivery.